Morning viewer. So today is Saturday the 21st of December. So technically I should be finished for Christmas. But me, being the amazing dad I am, <laughs> has decided in my ultimate wisdom that I'm going to help Tom today with this emergency boiler install. We've got a uh, upgrade to do. And he's on his own, so I thought I'd help him out before Christmas. So, let's get on with it and get this upgrade done. And then we can go home for Christmas. Now this is the boiler we're going to be replacing, and it's an old Mice and Orion. It's a heat-only boiler, set up on a fully pumped system. And as you can see from the warning notice, this boiler has already been condemned, and that's why we are changing this boiler. Now this Mice and Orion is a cast iron heat exchanger with a balanced flue, and it came out in 1988 and ceased production in 1993. So this boiler could actually be older than Tom. So I believe the reason why this boiler has been condemned is it's spilling products of combustion actually into the garage and the flue is in a poor condition. So let's get the say to touch test done and get this boiler isolated. So you can see the front cover is badly corroded and actually the case seal is split here at the top. So just by the state of this front cover, this boiler is long overdue being replaced. So you can also see this balanced flue is in poor condition. It's held on by bits of wire and it's actually not sealed here at the top. Now me and Tom have had a little wager on what these pipes actually feed. Because we need to know that when we come to install the new boiler. So put down in the comments guys what you think uh, these pipes actually feed. So you can see four connections on top of this boiler. The two on the right are from the flow, so I think the first one, the 22 on the right hand side, is the vent pipe. Then you've got the flow pipe with the pump and the three-way valve. Then on the left hand side, you've got the return being linked in together. The 22 being the return for the heating, and the 15 I think is the return from the cylinder. If you look on the diverter valve, the AB connection is where the flow comes in off the boiler. The A connection is what goes off to the heating. And the B connection, which is a 50mm, I think is the flow to the cylinder. Now Tom thinks the first pipe on the left hand side, the 22, is the vent pipe. Then he thinks it's the rad flow pipe. Then he thinks the 50mm is the cold feed from the F and E. Then he thinks the next 50 mil is the flow to the cylinder. And then the last 22 on the right hand side, he thinks is the combined return for the heating and the hot water. So who's correct guys? Is it me or is it Tom? Put it down in the comments to say whether you think it's me or Tom who is correct. Anyway, let's get to the board in the classroom and I'll explain exactly who is correct and how we're going to change this to a combi boiler. Now, according to the boiler manufacturer's instructions, you can see the flow is on the right hand side of this heat exchanger and the return is on the left hand side of this heat exchanger. So it's not looking good for Tom so far. Now, first of all, sorry for the crudity of the drawing. I've tried to colour code it, so hopefully it makes sense. So here we go. Now, this is what we found out once we'd cut the pipe and blown down the pipes to see exactly where they went. We'll start left to right. The left one was the return for the heating and the actual cylinder. So the way they piped the cylinder up was they came off the right hand side of the zone valve, they went into the bottom of the cylinder, came out of the top and then down into the return on the left hand side. So technically the original installers did that correctly because that's how we used to do it to try and keep the heat out into the cylinder by going backwards through the coil. I mean Tom's wrong already. But anyway let's carry on. Then we were right, it was the flow because of the pump 
and the zone valve and it went off to the rads and then to the cylinder. And then the one on the right was the vent pipe, which I was correct again, Tom was wrong. It goes up into the actual loft and they did a close coupled bit here. So this was 22 mil and then they joined it in here in 50 mil. So not a good idea because technically what they could have done was they could have run it all the way back down, but they were never going to do that. So they did a combined cold feed and vent. So Tom was kind of right on that bit, but he was wrong on everything else. So, sorry son, your dad's still a goat and you've still a lot to learn. That's the boiler off the wall, which was one hell of a heavy piece of cast iron. So let's get this flue removed and then I can start bricking up on the outside while Tom fixes the boiler and installs the pipework on the inside. Now the first thing we've done is use fix and fill expanding foam which sets like iron within an hour and we'll keep this block fixed so we can get the bracket on so then Tom can get the boiler on so he can start piping it up. Now the foam has gone off we can now use sand and cement to cover the foam to make it fireproof and we've now fix the bracket into the block this will go nowhere so any of you think this will just fall off the wall then you're incorrect because it sets like iron all the time i was patching in this brickwork it absolutely peed it down now what i've done is i've made my mix a little bit stiffer than i normally would and this is just a ready mix mortar mix from b and q now this is what I've got to patch in, this is what I've got to work with. So let's start getting the drill out and toothing out the mortar in between the bricks to make it easier for the bricks to come out. Now you can just see I've used an 8mm masonry bit to go into the mortar above and to the side and below the bricks. All I've got to do now is start at the top bricks and then knock these bricks out. If you knock the bricks out from bottom to top, it makes the brick what you're not going to be removed weak and could snap at the joints. Now that's all the half bricks removed, it's just now left me full bricks to put back in. Now these uh, houses are 30 years old. So these bricks are supposed to be the correct bricks, but obviously they've not weathered properly. So the yellow stands out massively and you can only buy the yellow bricks, you can't buy the red ones. So the first thing I've done is I've used my spirit level to actually go across the front and vertically to make sure the first brick is plumb and level. So now the first brick is plumb and level, it makes it easier now for me to get the rest of the bricks in. Now it's time to make all the alterations upstairs in the bathroom and the loft. Now we sheet up everywhere, but I know a lot of you guys use roll and stroll. So what do you prefer, sheeting up like us or roll and stroll? Put it in the comments and let me know guys which one you prefer and if you have had any problems with sheet or the roll and stroll. Now we did pre-warn the customers that we were going to be putting sheets on the stairs, so they went out. Now here's the cylinder we're going to be removing. Tom's already had this draining down for the last couple of hours. So all we've got to do now is get it out. Now the cylinder is out. You can see the 250 mils what came up to feed the flow and return for the cylinder. And this 22 mil pipe is what went up to feed the booster pump in the loft. The other pipes that aren't painted are the feeds for the hot and cold water to the wash basin on the other side of this wall. Now because of built-in wardrobes being over the top of the boiler and the bathroom and ensuite floors being tiled 
we were not able to make any changes to the pipework above the boiler so what we've had to do is we've had to use the old 50 mil flow and returns from the cylinder for our hot and cold water to feed the boiler obviously this is all going to be flushed out and cleaned first before we use it but it is a way of getting over this massive problem we had now we found quite a few faults in this loft so it was a good job we're removing all this because this could have caused them problems in years to come so let's have a quick look now and see what faults we actually found now this is a Pro 1.5 bar twin impeller centrifugal shower pump. This pump has been installed in the incorrect location. It should have been installed in the cylinder cupboard and not in the loft because it hasn't got the minimum head required from the feed system to the pump. Also the pipes coming off this pump should have been kept vertical not bending down like they are because the flow switch could become faulty and stuck. So that's a poor incorrect pump installation. What about the pipe work coming from the feed system? Now we've got three outlets. We've got one what feeds the two baths, one what feeds the shower and the other one feeds the hot water cylinder. And as you can see, they are all at the same level near enough. Now the connection that feeds down to the hot water cylinder should be 25 mil or one inch higher than the cold water that feeds the pump. So if the water was to run out, it would run out at the hot water end first, not the cold water end. So you don't get burnt when you're having a shower. Now what else can we find wrong? Now the feed system on the right is what feeds the hot and cold water to the bathroom and this smaller system in front of us is the F&E, the feeding expansion for the central heating. To better explain what's wrong with this installation let's go back to the classroom and take a look at the board and I'll hopefully be able to draw it out and explain what's wrong. So quickly let's go through what we found with these feed systems. Now, according to the regulations, if you have indirect hot water, which we have here on a cylinder, you require a stored system of at least 100 litres of water. But if you have indirect cold water as well as the indirect hot water cylinder, then you need to double that to 200 litres, but better still, 250 litres of stored water. Now, for some reason on this job, the system was changed for a cough, what we call a coughing type system. So long, wide, but not very high system. And this coughing system holds about 50 gallons or 227 litres of water. So technically it's on a bit on the low side, but we've also got a pump there which is pumping to a shower so this system could technically run very low on water so you've seen from the video that they're on the same level but the f and e system is only just smaller than the coffin system now an f and e system holds about four gallons about 15 liters of water in there but when it comes to pressures it's not about how much water is there it's how much height is there so the higher the head the more pressure there could be a chance where the water level in the coffin system is lower than the f &E, which is not really a problem unless the coil in this cylinder has a problem and then you could get the central heating water mixing into the hot water. So turning fluid category two into fluid category three water, which could be a problem young kids or the elderly are bathing so just bear in mind when you go into a loft and you're going to change things especially if you're changing feed systems which is becoming 
pretty rare now to be fair just make sure you take into consideration the heights for if they've got an F and E system. So it's a good job that in this installation all this was coming out because this couple who've only just moved into this house could have had an absolute nightmare with this installation. So let's get back to the install and see what else we're doing. And the final thing is a lack of insulation on the cistern and the pipework. So, all in all, very poor. Now that's all the pipework complete, we've now filled up and started to run the boiler. We've tested the gas, so all we've got left to do now is complete all the benchmark tests and insulate all this pipework. So that's all the installation finished, all the commissioning finished. It's dark outside as you can see. So time for me to go home, just leaving Tom to finish off a few tidy up bits and insulate this pipework. Hopefully you've liked this video and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.